but my my actual bachelor's degree is from South Dakota State, and it's in interdisciplinary studies. So I actually um, learned, um, you know, th- you know, theoretical uh, research um, concepts into how to take a complex um, multi causal problem and 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 look at it through the eyes of the di- of different disciplines that tackle it and try to understand it from their own perspective and actually f- fuse those perspectives together into a new um, concept, a new I- idea, you know, a, 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 what some refer to as a complex and multi-causal explanation, basically a, a interdisciplinary model or theory of how things are functioning. And climate change is really one of those things the, the causative agent of it is very clear. You know, it's something that, that can be discussed from an a- atmospheric chemistry perspective, but all the effects and all of the feedbacks and everything that, uh, that, that, um, that encompass, you know, abrupt climate change or disruption and the damage involved, that's really a, a multidisciplinary uh, thing. And, you know, I, I, I take the approach of always trying to make sure that, you know, people understand, um, you know, just how um, uh, damaging these events and the acceleration of the events and why it's accelerating, you know, what they what it, what that all actually means. Uh, because, you know, like, you know, like um, I saw a. Um, a uh, article or something by written by, by the World Economic Forum talking about oh there's a pollen, you know, insect pollinators um, do uh, um, uh, contribute 153 billion dollars a year to the global economy and crop production and but the but the diversity and and and, and populations of insects are decreasing threatening uh, uh, crop production and I was like well if you yeah. So, OK, you lose crops. But what happens to the people that need the food? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what happens to the people that produce the food? What happens to the uh, to the ability to um, to even have current agriculture when you have both pollination pollinators decreasing and storms getting worse, destroying areas that you needed to plant your food? <laughs> you, know, it, you know, you know, there's. It's more than, you know, it's always this economic numbers game or it's temperature changes or it's soil. You know, I'm not an expert in everything, but I can take what these experts are saying and try to put it together into something that's more comprehensive to make people understand how significant these things are, because that's really not being done. And so as a result of that, nobody, most the average person really doesn't get how bad it is and how bad it's becoming and how fast it's going i you know i mean right now i'm I'm watching the the arctic undergo what is basically a a non-ending heat wave like i almost can't even call it a heat wave anymore it's just it's gotten very warm since about late february early march and it's not cooling down and it's losing catastrophic catastrophically losing sea ice and and, and 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 the permafrost is is melting exponentially, meaning it's just getting worse, 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 worse every year compared to all previous times. And nobody under, nobody knows, nobody really talks about it. No one knows this is happening because nobody tells them, and nobody really understands the implications of this yeah. to the fact that climate change is going to acceler- continue accelerating significantly in the coming years, and we're going to have to deal with more of these events. I mean, imagine events like. Well, I mean, imagine events like the Midwest flooding we're having now happening every couple of years. I mean, happening every couple of years, not even every year or more than once a year, just every like two to five years. I mean, we already had the Missouri flood in 2011. It took forever for many places to recover. And now we have this one in 2019. Imagine even those events happening every couple of years or you get go from this and maybe we go to a, a huge drought that doesn't end for four or five years. And then we get hit with this, another mega flood. That's people don't understand that, that it's about an accumulation, like I said earlier, accumulation of effects. And so we kind of, most people just go walking around kind of, 
kind of just like, oh, everything's fine. Oh, it was a <laughs> bad flood. Oh, you know, you know, yeah. this has happened before, and you know, and it's a lot of normalization. But you know, I don't, you know, I I don't have very good optimism for the next you know, four or five years in terms of what's going to happen to this region. I mean, I'm worried about this summer. You know, I'm worried about it having this flood, having severe storms, even if the storms themselves aren't particularly notable, you get more rain, get more flooding events that exacerbate everything that's happening. And then maybe in the summer, it just gets hot and it gets really hot. And and, and crops that were able to get grown have to deal with heat stress and and, and impacts from, incre- from an increasing drought. I mean, I, you know, it, the, it gets harder to predict the beyond the immediate future, what's going to happen when your climate is changing so rapidly that you don't, you can't really depend on your traditional ways of, of projecting the future being, um, being reliable anymore. And so, you know, that's the biggest danger. People aren't going to really know what's going to happen next and are able to prepare for it. 